Hello everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to Kickstarter Look Back, where I take a look at projects that I went through on Kickstarter and I backed them a couple years or so ago and tell you what I think about them, where they are today, just kind of giving you a catch up on my thoughts for those. So we got 12 different projects we're going to be taking a look at here. So we're going to start with Latte Throwdown. So Latte Throwdown is a coffee game, which I honestly thought would be a lot of fun. Um, the idea here of rolling dice and building combinations, and this is a really terrible game, unfortunately, because you're rolling these different combinations, but you're literally just rolling dice and hoping that you match. And wow, it was just it was, this was a huge disappointment for me. Then we have Tobito. Now this is a very beautiful uh, game. This this uh, company tends to make these really. This is like porcelain here these pieces and you're trying to put them in order here i thought that the game itself was okay there's some interesting ideas here we're jumping over it's a very small little abstract game but it really does work well as kind of a coffee table style game if that's something you want i can't really talk a lot about 1822 the railways of great britain other than i got this just because i wanted to put another 18 uh, xx game in the dice tower library uh, the this one here you can see it's a map of England and all I think that this is one of the ones that when it came in I said you know what there's enough of these games in the library not many people check them out but I do like that they keep making these so that's kind of cool so I'm glad this one's in the library terraforming Ma Mars big box and 3d tiles so after years and years of Etsy and everyone else making stuff for terraforming Mars finally the Stronghold and Frick's, Frick's Games decide to make it themselves. So this is okay. The box is nice. It's a big box that holds everything. The 3D tiles are really neat, although not as good as some of the ones on the, on the aftermarket, but they look pretty neat. And then there's a few cards in here. I'm glad I have this big box, but I wouldn't buy it because it is, you are literally just buying the box and a few cards. And, of course, anyone who wants those few cards would be kind of annoyed. Everything does kind of fit in here. So if you want to play Terraforming Mars, you can see there's all sorts of cool things that fit in here. But, like these cube trays and stuff like that, some of the stuff is not worth your time. Um, you can watch my review to see how I, I put mine together and how I stuck everything in. Overlord, a boss monster adventure. So this one here from Brotherwise Games. Now, I did not really care for Boss Monster from Brotherwise Games, but I got to say, I really enjoyed Overlord. This one came, and this one you're placing a tile and you're placing a monster on this grid in front of you. And you're trying to get monsters to live in their right, you know, the correct spots. You get points for the, the monsters and for the tiles. It still has that, you know, 32-bit pixelated artwork, but I don't know. I like it. There's also these bad guys that kind of you, they'll help you score different points at the end of the game. It's pretty fun. You know, I, I don't like, this is a genre I think that's a little crowded right now, like filling a grid and score points. But this one I thought was pretty nice and I actually put it in the Dice Tower library. Canopy, easily the prettiest game we're talking about today. Canopy, which works really well, by the way, uh, with two players. Um, but in this game, which has amazing Vincent Dutre artwork, um, and Tim Eisner is the designer of this, and you're just drafting cards. You're passing cards around. You're drafting them. Like So you see, for example, this Philodendron. If you get one, zero, two, zero. But if you get three of them, eight points. While the Fern, if you get one, it's two, two, zero, three, four, and so on. And you're trying to get different animals that give you special things. But the artwork is really cool. You're growing your trees. And the higher you grow trees, you can get more points that way. Not a complex game. It looks more complex than it is, but beautiful and gorgeous. A nice little one to carry around. Shelfie Stacker. So this is a sort of a simultaneous selection style game where everyone's going to... It's about putting games onto your shelf here. And I do like the little backgrounds here. Terrifying Mars, Big World, Dr. Howe, you know, things like that. Really great artwork, but you're going to be drafting these dice, but you get these dice by playing these special cards. And they made 16 special cards you can play where no, you never know what anyone has. And then you're putting them on your shelves here, putting the different colors and different columns. 
it's pretty neat. Um, it's thematic. The theming makes sense. If you're trying to put all this stuff on your shelf, really good components. Um, and just a fun little game. Intrepid. Now, this was a huge Kickstarter from Uproarious Games. And I never played this game. I think we got it. Um, and I think we pass it on to someone else. There's a whole lot of stuff going on in here. I'm not sure why we never played it. There's a lot of interesting ideas in the game. Um, I don't know that I love the graphic design. I'm not sure what made this go so much more than other games did. But I look at it now and I wonder, okay, so this is one I obviously missed. Either it came in, I gave it to another reviewer. Um, I'm not sure, like I said, the Dice Tower ever reviewed it. But I also don't know that I want to go back and hunt it down. Hmm. Domination. So total domination. This is one that has not yet fulfilled. So, they, of course, their Kickstarter is all like, oh, sorry, man. We wish we had to send out. I get it. This one's kind of an interesting game. It's a, there's some, you can get miniatures for it, which I don't think are necessary at all. But you're like putting different pieces on this board. It, it looks like a war game, but doesn't necessarily have that feel of a war game. Unfortunately, the, the, the page shows you more about the miniatures, which aren't that great of miniatures, than the game themselves. But you're putting them in these different areas on the board and then moving to other areas. It's almost like a war game, but instead of a map, it's this more abstracted board. So that looks kind of interesting. I'm still wanting to play this game. I guess I'll just have to wait till it comes out. Role Player Adventures. This is a standalone co-op narrative board game for one to four players, although I think it works best with others. Me and my kids played this entire game, the entire campaign, so you can watch a review. They liked it more than I did. I thought it was fine. I thought there was a few small issues with it. They really loved it, and it is a very good story. It has a good system where things that happen to you um, will happen, like someone that you meet, and the way you treat them will come back and affect you later on in the game, and that's really fun. Now, it's not a ton like role player. It uses the same characters, the same cards type things, but it's a very different game. It's very much a choose-your-own-adventure with some dice manipulation tests that you can play. And it's also super heavy. There's a lot of content in that box. Very happy. For 100 bucks. that was a really good deal. The Age of Atlantis. Now, I backed this one almost grudgingly because the other games I played from Eldorado I have not thought were very good. I do like the cover of this one, and this one has been getting very good reviews, mostly because it's a very short rule book and seems pretty easy to play. I really like this. Cerebrus, look how cool that thing is. Or the Minotaur, although this whole idea of mechanical Greek stuff has already been done before. But it looks really neat. I certainly want to give this one a whirl at some point. It is in a Dice Tower library, so because I know a lot of people think it's neat. Man, I just love these guys that carry different resources around. They're really cool looking. And the last thing we're taking a look at today is Perseverance Castaway Chronicles. So this is a big giant game from Mind Clash Games. Uh, best known for anachrony. This one made three quarters of a million dollars. Did very, very well. And has two games inside it, which I'm always a little suspicious of. The biggest problem I have with two games inside is which one's the better game to play? and has a little dinosaurs. I still would like to try this one out, actually. But because it's a big game, it just hasn't happened yet. And that's the only reason I haven't played this one yet. There's a lot going on. It hasn't gotten a ton of buzz. I haven't seen people playing it at conventions like I see them play Anachrony or um, Tricarian. Those games are still getting repeat plays. This one doesn't seem to be there, but who knows? Maybe it is in some sort of fashion. Uh, all right. Well, that's all the different things that I backed on Kickstarter. So, looks like I got all of them except for one, so that's good. But anyway, some projects I find interesting, some I don't. Let me know what you think of any of these projects in the, in the comments. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassaldo, and you've been watching Kickstarter Look Back.